Regular viewers of my channel will know that I've recently been looking into the performance of a 12 core 2013 Mac Pro. What's interesting about this computer is that despite being six or seven years old, the multi-core performance is still pretty decent. Uh, but the single core performance has fallen some way behind modern machines. And this raises a question. Is it better to have lots of cores or is it better to have faster single core performance? To really fully answer this question, we need to know the basics about how computer processors work. But first of all, let me give you a quick answer. Which is best depends on how you use your computer. Single core performance is important for software applications which don't or can't take advantage of multiple processor cores. Now, having more cores doesn't necessarily mean more speed. But if your app is optimized for multi-core usage, then it likely will run faster with more cores. And examples of such apps would be professional music production, video editing, and maybe some graphic design tools. So in general, if you spend most of your time using apps that are only optimized for single core, you probably won't see much benefit from increasing your core count on your CPU. An analogy might be useful. If you need to get one or two people from point A to point B, perhaps a Ferrari would do the job well. But what if you needed to transport 50 people? Well, sure, you could make lots of quick trips in the car, but overall a bus might be a faster solution. It's a similar kind of story with single core versus multi-core. Let's dive a little deeper though to find out what makes one CPU better than another. There's more to it than just the number of cores. In the early days of computing, CPUs only had one core. Intel introduced their first dual-core CPU in 2005, although we should say that multi-core CPUs like IBM's Power Ford do predate that by a few years. For a moment though, let's imagine that we've gone back in time. We're looking at a time when only single-core CPUs were available. We have a CPU and it, it has the speed measured in hertz. A hertz is the number of compute or clock cycles that the CPU can complete every second. This is commonly referred to as the clock speed. In the early 1970s, CPUs broke the one megahertz barrier, one megahertz being one million cycles per second. And around 1999, 2000, CPUs started to be measured in gigahertz. One gigahertz is one billion cycles per second. And CPU manufacturers love to quote these clock speed figures. But actually they're pretty meaningless without knowing another measurement, IPC or instructions per cycle. Suppose we have two CPUs, one from brand A, another from brand B, and both are measured at one gigahertz. Without any other information, we might assume that these two processors are equal in terms of performance. But what if CPU A can complete one instruction per cycle, whereas CPU B can complete two instructions per cycle? Well then clearly CPU B will be a much faster CPU. So you need both the clock speed and the IPC figure to properly assess the performance of the CPU. And manufacturers have traditionally focused on just publishing the clock speed. And that's not very helpful. There's also another factor affecting the performance of your CPU. And that's the amount of cache RAM or memory that the CPU has. This type of RAM is very fast because it sits very close to the processor core and it's much faster than the main RAM in your system. The CPU uses this cache to temporarily store data and reduce the time that it spends moving data to and from your system memory. So cache RAM can have a huge impact on your CPU performance. The more you have, the better. Fortunately today we've got easy access to benchmarking tools so we can assess for ourselves the performance of a processor rather than letting the manufacturer's PR machine confuse us. When it comes to CPU performance, we can't just keep increasing the clock speed though, because we start to hit physical limitations, mainly power and heat. And once you get to about three gigahertz, power consumption increases disproportionately. Um, power draw causes heat and heat slows everything down. Now in more recent years, CPU cores have been made increasingly smaller, so we find that we can fit more cores on a single processor chip, giving our computer unprecedented numbers of CPUs to handle different tasks. But of course, the operating system and the software that you use needs to be optimized to split these tasks up and give them to all these different cores simultaneously. If this is done properly, the effect can be dramatic. Low-power multi-core CPUs will be the future. 
Because for most day-to-day -day tasks, you only need a single core of a modern CPU running at a relatively low clock speed. And if our apps can be optimized better to use multiple cores, then you can have lots of these cores running at these low clock speeds, drawing minimal power but giving you great performance. And that's great news for laptops, tablets, and smartphones, because it means longer battery life. But all of this doesn't mean that you have to sacrifice performance. Most CPUs today can automatically ramp up the performance, increasing their power draw and increasing their clock speed as needed. Now, when it comes to multi-core CPUs, you may also have heard the term hyper-threading. This is a name that Intel gives to the process of splitting up a CPU core into two virtual cores. AMD calls it simultaneous multi-threading, or SMT, but basically they're the same thing. From the point of view of the software, it sees those two threads as two distinct CPU cores. And since a core is not always fully utilized, this method of working can offer performance benefits if instructions are balanced across the virtual cores. But you're only going to see those benefits in apps that are already well optimized for multi-threading. And you should never assume that this process doubles the performance of each core. In the case of our 12-core equipped Mac Pro that we mentioned at the outset, the operating system and its software actually sees 24 cores because of hyper-threading. Clever stuff. Well, I've simplified a few things in this explanation, but hopefully it's given you enough information to decide for yourself which is most important to you, faster single-core performance or more cores. And that may be relevant when you're looking at an older computer in a closed ecosystem like the 2013 Mac Pro. On the other hand, if you're looking to buy new in the PC market, Strong competition from AMD and Intel has really shaken up the marketplace. We're seeing fantastic new CPU designs that don't require you to make a compromise. You can have fast clock speed and great single core performance at the same time as enjoying great multi-core abilities. And mobile computing with ARM CPUs is starting to look very interesting. With the fastest ARM chips now benchmarking ahead of Intel's Core i5 and i7, in some cases. But I don't think it'll be long until we start to see ARM-based laptops that can compete with Intel and AMD's mobile offerings. So it's a great time to be a computer geek. And that's all for this video. I hope you found it useful. Please subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed the content. It really does make a huge difference to me and the channel, and it only costs you one click. But if not, that's okay, and thanks for watching. I'll see you next time for some more geekery.